Welcome to our review on the organic alternative. So we've already looked at a couple of different ways that we can carry out farming. And what we're going to look at finally is organic farming. So whenever we're talking about an organic farmer, we're talking about someone who is not using those intensive farming practices. So what their goal is, is to produce much more quantities of healthy, good quality food. And they do this by not using any artificial chemicals whatsoever. Obviously organic farmers still need to add minerals to their soil, but they can't do it by using a chemical fertilizer. So instead they use a couple of different things. The first one is that they can use animal manure or compost because that's going to add the minerals and also improve fiber content of the soil. So what we'll see is even though that release of minerals is slow, it's going to last for a much longer period of time. In addition to obviously taking care of the minerals, then they need to think about the other problems that meet farmers. So competition as a result of weeds growing in your field with your plants is another issue. And the way that they have to deal with that is through weeding. So this will be by hand and that means it's very labor intensive to have a lot of people out in the fields pulling up the weeds individually. They will also use this idea of crop rotation. So that means that they'll have four fields say and different crops growing in different fields. And then the next year they'll rotate it round so when you had something that was growing above ground in that field one year, you might have something growing below ground there the following year. They will also use these plants called legumes in one part of the cycle because they add nitrates to the soil because in their root structures, they've got nitrogen fixing bacteria present and that helps to obviously return those nitrates to the soil once more. And the last thing that they can do in order to help improve their plant growth is to vary the seed planting times. This means that they'll only be harvesting a small number of plants at any given time, so there's no need to preserve them. Finally, the other problem they really need to think about is how to deal with pests. They can't use the chemical pesticides, but instead they use a process called biological control. And they like to ask you about this on your exam paper every so often, just with the question, what is biological control? And the answer there is a natural predator is introduced to kill and eat the pests. So biological control is where we're using natural predators to then kill and eat the pests that would normally damage our crops. So there are three key advantages we need to remember here. The first one, we don't need the artificial chemicals. Second one is because we're not using those chemicals, there are no chemicals to escape into the environment. And the third one is as long as those predators are alive, then you've got your biological control working. There are, however, some disadvantages to this process. Because we're talking about living things and living things don't always do as we want them to, then the predator may not actually eat the pest. They also might eat other useful species that are also present in that area. We may find a situation where the predator numbers would increase out of control. And we also might find that the predator could move elsewhere. So rather than stay where we want it to, it might decide that that field over there looks much nicer and move it elsewhere and therefore leave us with our pest problem. The other thing is it could impact the food web. If we've introduced a predator to kill a certain thing, then other animals may be relying on that one bug too. So it could have effects on our food chain.